Who leads Jewish liberal thought? Where did uh, uh, suburban Jews or even uh, urban Democrat, liberal Democrats, where do they get their, their ideas on what's what about Israel? Do they get it from the Jewish papers? Um, there is a strong progressive movement in America that has some legitimate concerns about Israel, primarily the, uh, the, the Kotel issue, the religious uh, you know, uh, powers and how that's been okay. since, the, since this founding of the state it's been an issue. Now, progressives during the previous eight years of the Obama administration were highly um, empowered, I believe. And by the establishment and government? By the establishment by the government, by the sense of the country, uh, there was a, a, a lot of promises made, a lot of support. Um, I can tell you from working from the inside of the consulate, there were some things that uh, were done against Israel. Um, Michael Oren revealed it in his book, Ally. Exactly. exactly. And uh, I like to tell people that uh, I'm not on page XYZ 182 or whatever in his book, although I put those programs, I, I had the honor of, of being his advanced man to do the programs with Rabbi Deborah Bowen and Dr. Earl Bowen with the Black Shul in, in Philadelphia, and, and, and I've, I enjoyed doing that, and an honor to work with, with uh, Mike Warren. He did um, write in his book how Obama worked to create distance, and um, I actually... I mean, distance between the American and Israeli... Yes, yes. Yeah. and I've written... Public, the public, not just on the, on the government levels or the po political levels. Oh, oh uh, uh, President Obama with some, I believe he did some wonderful things domestically. His international relations, to my mind, were a disaster, and primarily with Israel. And um, Middle East policy, Middle East. Iran nuclear. Uh, it, it, we're, we will suffer the effects of that. The whole world will. And the whole world will. Yeah. There was one silver lining that I believe the Prime Minister spoke about today. Okay. The silver lining of Obama's Middle East policy was putting Saudi Arabia closer to Israel and the other uh, Sunni Arab states because, hey, there's a big threat in the Middle East. It ain't Israel, yeah. it's Iran. Yeah. Well, it's, well, Saudi Arabia is no angel. Uh, they not, may not be an angel. They have uh, a domestic uh, issues that, uh, that um, may be in conflict with liberal American, understandably. There's a lot of issues with uh, their support of, past support of international uh, Muslim negative education. Extremist, Wahhabist okay. education. They own, they own half the, half the mosques right, in the United right, States right, and North right, America. Right, okay. and, and then they preach Jew hatred and Christian hatred. Okay, well, that's what, what you said, but... <laughs> Sorry to that, that, that That's... Yeah. But... Um, Let's be honest, but, but um, the, the, the line of, line of the, this uh, inquiry is uh, what shapes Americans' views of Israel and what's good for Israel and what's bad for Israel? How do people form those opinions? Where do they get it? I'm sorry? Where do people get their information about what, whether Netanyahu is good or bad, whether Israeli, Israeli government is good or bad, or international or the relations are good? Do they get it from the, from the Philadelphia Inquirer or from the Jewish exponent? Um, what I've seen over the last number of years, which I kind of put at the door of President Obama with, with has been increased dramatically by uh, President Trump, is a separation in America between right and left. And I think it's, it, it really was enhanced under the last president and has been ex exaggerated. And, and, and there's a, a larger and larger gulf between left and right now in America. And it's a big challenge to bring Americans back together. Uh, it, what makes me think of this is that everyone's getting their news from the people that they agree with and few are reading others than what they want to hear and what they want to see. Uh -huh. And until we have an open mind and open information from different sources, and when I teach or taught high school kids, I would tell them, you have to 
understand there's a lot of BS in the world. You have to have a good BS detector. If something doesn't sound right, know where the source is coming from and do your research. Mm -hmm. how, how much influence do you feel that the Jewish press has on Jewish communal thinking? Right? When I say individual thinking of Jewish America. Well, Jewish press plays a critical role in America. Uh, it is the record, the archive of what is taking place in the Jewish world. Okay. Now, how it influences it, it's the vehicle that those in leadership express what's going on, whether it's from Israel or local leadership. It's the Jewish press that has a concern to put it out there. So it plays a very instrumental role in the American Jewish community. Mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that the uh, Jewish Federation may be predominantly liberal as either a reflection of or uh, uh, clinging to a Jewish clientele. Mm -hmm. To what degree are the Jewish inf uh, newspapers influenced by the federations and, and uh, donors? Well, first of all, I don't quite accept your premise okay. that, that the Jewish community represented, involved with Jewish federations on one side or the other. Okay. I think there is a, a, a spectrum of support for Jewish federation. And as I said before, the challenge now is bring people together who have different viewpoints who have been exacerbated to take sides over the last number of years. So we need to bring these people together to understand what our common goals are, what our common values are, and move forward. Do you, do you read the, the Jewish Exponent? I read the Jewish Exponent every week. And I sometimes have things that are put in the Jewish Exponent. <laughs> so I'm very happy that wonderful people work in Jewish Exponent and not the Jewish press. They're dedicated people who are trying to do the best that they can. Have you detected a liberal bias in that paper? No, I haven't. I've detected that there, uh, that there is reporting on all sides. And when there's reporting on all sides, there's people attacked from both sides. So they get it from both sides, which may mean that they're doing their job. How about other Jewish papers? As a Clevelander, you, you must be familiar with other papers around oh, the sure. country. Oh. It, have, you know, have you detected or do you sense a, a, a bias in, uh, in, in any Jewish uh, or in, in much of Jewish uh, news? I don't see much bias. I don't think that's really so much of an issue. Uh, you have editors from different backgrounds who, um, while they come, from different perspectives, try to do the best they can to have an, a full projection of what's going on. So I don't see that so much as an issue. Um, I think there is a critical issue in the Jewish press that all press is, is dealing with is that uh, we're in an internet age where the press is trying to find where, how to survive in this age and is looking at different models to survive so they can do their job of giving, particularly Jewish press, a Jewish perspective on what's going on.